<laughs> so how are you? How's your family? Everybody's fine. We're, we're doing okay. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is that I don't really see many t- opportunities to write good things about local journalism. And then I saw your piece about 50 years. It's 50 years, right? It, it is. Well, it's 50 years last year. And, and the Irish Echo, of course, will be 100 years in, in, uh, in 1928. But um, I, I, I have to say, I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's unremittingly difficult for, for local press, you know, uh-huh. so... So while we have a successful model in, in the U.S. in particular, the, it's not the local media powerhouse that local media was, uh, even it, it serves Irish America. Um, and that's that's true of the, the Belfast media model is is, is very troubled. Um, uh-huh. and, and yet we only, employ, we only employ 16 people, but there isn't enough money for 16 people, which is why we're trying to go down the social enterprise model similar to Lanfest. So it's a great milestone. But look, there's no in my view, there's no magic magic formula out there for how you how you make a quality, independent, fearless local journalism viable. Uh, I, have, I I have well, you know, we're very pleased what we've done with the Irish Echo, but it is two two journalists. <laughs> so yeah, so it's challenging. Yeah. You know, I, I never did get why you you um you folded the uh the yeah, Daily Daily Ireland, Daily Ireland, yeah. Ireland, yeah. That was a it was that, just was a nation, that was a nationwide. That was a nationwide. That was a nationwide. That was a na- well, well, that was a national paper. I know people like to say that you know, things are before its time, but it was certainly before its time. It was a a pro Irish Republican daily newspaper at a time when uh, the government was on the offensive against uh, uh, Irish Republicans and against Sinn Fein, North and South, with gov- a senior government minister attacking the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. So. All, so the so the so it was very difficult, and you know we had a run at it. We had a year and a half. We enjoyed it enormously. It cost probably we probably lost three million dollars, two million, and that was my money, um, which 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 I paid back over fifteen years. Um, but it was it played a very vital role at that time, and and pushing forward the peace process. Those were the, the period when Sinn Fein. Worked with the IRA to to achieve decommissioning, which was achieved, but right. a very very difficult time. Uh, at that time in two thousand and four, I think Sinn Féin had one seat in the Southern Parliament. Today, yeah. today in the Southern part in the Dublin Parliament, Sinn Féin is the biggest biggest party by votes, and it's also the biggest party in Northern Ireland by votes. So the biggest party in the island today is Sinn Féin. Back yeah. then, it was a very different story. So. Uh, but you know, also two thousand and four, going with a print newspaper, probably probably was the wrong idea. Probably was the wrong idea. But maybe maybe even the internet would have been better. Yeah, should have probably. If you had gone online, you'd been a bit more successful. Well, maybe, but certainly, you know, your cost your your cost wouldn't have been the same. And the, you know, the great dilemma facing those of us who are still printing is you print um, for every thousand copies you print, you know, five hundred are just going to sit in the shops. Yeah, <laughs> but but you still have to put. Two papers and five hundred shops or stores, and the hope yeah. they sell one. And that, that's that's a that's a wasteful business model. Maybe yeah. it was okay back in the day when you were putting in ten thousand copies and selling eight thousand, but to put in, you know, ten thousand sell five. That's a that's a very difficult business model. I, yeah. I'm told that two two newspapers a week close in the U.S. Jim, and I'm not sure if that is print. Uh, they mean only print. I was in Huntsville, Alabama, in March the week I arrived. The Huntsville, Alabama newspaper, which I think is al.com, it just closed its print edition, just moved into to uh, a paywall uh, internet version. So uh, when they say two papers a week are closing, maybe they mean the print the print that closes, or maybe they actually mean the whole thing closes down. Yeah, I think it's print. I think it's the print papers. Okay. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm not okay. sure about that, but I think that's what it is, and it's yeah. In the United States, these these local papers face an existential crisis. Frankly, they uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 touch and go whether they can they can they can make it. Uh, well, and, and that, that's that's where we are in Belfast. At the minute we're going we're going through another round of redundancies. We're only a very small company, but you're you know sixteen people, but we can't afford sixteen. So that's now being discussed with the the union and the staff about going down again, perhaps opening shorter hours. 
listen, it's it's uh, it's difficult. And as you're aware, in France, Australia, even now in the Republic of Ireland, there is support for local newspapers. Scotland, Wales, um, but not not in not where I'm from, not not from Belfast. So um, there's no strategy. Everybody in government agrees that you know the the social media is a toxic environment. It's a wild west. Uh, you know, so especially for women politicians. But despite uh-huh. that, despite that, there is no suggestion from the government of how they might support uh, newspapers at a local level, which are bolstering democracy, helping create creative communities. So the politicians recognise that, but where I'm from, they haven't done anything about it. Whereas I, I don't know the figure for France, but I did see it last week. The figure for sponsorship of newspapers or sub- subsidy for newspapers is it's substantial. It's really substantial. Yeah. In France. Yes, in France. Yeah. I'll, fi- I'll find you the uh, I'll find you the figures because last year there was a commission on the future of media in the Republic of Ireland uh-huh. that appointed by the Irish government. It reported last year, probably set up in twenty twenty or twenty twenty one. It reported last year, and in the report it, it said that other countries support for for local journalism uh, uh-huh. and print journalism, and uh, the figures for France were actually quoted. Um, so that's so, it. That, was that on? I can probably find that online, right? That report. Yeah, yeah. It's called it's called the report of the uh, the commission commission on the future of media. Okay. Future. Um, I I just want to check. I, I saw the figures last week. I think that's where I saw them. But if not, I'll find you them. Okay. Yeah. Do you know here? There's a there's a strong resistance to the government becoming involved in newspapers because of its early early. But but I, I'm kind of wondering if there's really any future unless the government somehow gets involved and stimulates the the uh, some creates some kind of a market for the for for honest solid journalism. What's your view on that? Well, I come from a different environment. Where I'm from, um, across Ireland, the public the government funds media. So uh-huh. RTE, R, RTE, which you'll be familiar with, is the yeah. Irish Irish government broadcaster. Which does have advertisements on some of its outlet, yeah. some of its output, excuse me, uh, but it's heavily subsidised by the government as well for many tens of millions of euro. That that media commission will have the figure. I think it's over a hundred million. But of course, the BBC model in, in Northern Ireland, we have the BBC, it's the UK model, is funded entirely, almost entirely, from the public purse. So we're from. I'm from a different background. Where I'm from, it's 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 always been the a given. That the government will fund um, public service journalism, and and more than that, I mean it funds uh, it funds uh, channels which provide entertainment. You know, yeah. so so <laughs> that's that's a different model from from you guys, where you know there's there's the, the BBC is fully funded uh, for many hundreds of millions of pounds, maybe it'd be a, a billion. Every household, for every television set you have, you might pay around hundred and two hundred dollars. Um, and that's called a license fee. So we are from, I'm from a different background, and of course it differs across the world. So there's, there's never been any hesitation where I'm from of, of saying the government should fund or should support local journalism. Yeah. Sadly, sadly they they don't support local print journal journalism, but um, they they have their own platform as it was as it were many many radio channels stations sorry BBC radio stations plus uh, many many TV channels and output and. So on and so forth. So different models. So my view is yes, if if local if public service journalism helps bolster democracy, yeah, there's a role for government. Uh-huh. Uh, so so um, so yeah, I'm in, I'm in favour of that. And how how you yeah. guard against them controlling it? Well, obviously have a have a a, a government influence. Influence in my view is clear to see on the BBC. Yeah, uh, and, and it's not it's you know it's London focused and that's the center of gravity. But um, I think there should also be support for local local journalism. Yeah, independent journalism. Now, now your Anderson Town papers basically yeah. those are those are private, right? Yes, yes. So they're supported totally by circulation and print, or, or or did you convert those to nonprofits? I'm trying to remember. No, no, I'm trying I'm trying to convert it to a nonprofit at the moment, but okay. but it's not easy. Yeah, we have four. We have four. We have we have three sources of revenue: the uh, funds from the sale of the print newspaper, the funds from advertising, the um, funds from events. We organize events. Yeah, 
Uh, but at present, at present, why we're trying to go to social enterprises, those are not enough to fund the newspapers. So the, the newspapers are not profitable. Okay. And, and we've amalgamated them and so on. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a good news story that we reached 50. Um, but and I, I think we will reach 100, but it will not be in the same format, format and it will have to be somebody else and it will have to be philanthropic or trust support to, to make that happen. There, okay. there's, I, don't, I don't believe there's a local newspaper in Ireland which is going to be viable in five years' time. I'm sorry, there won't, there won't be I, a... I, I, I don't believe there will be a local newspaper in Ireland, okay. north or south, which will be viable in five years' time. Okay. Un- unless they get government support, and in the Republic of Ireland, they're already moving. If you read that Future of the Media Media uh, Commission on the Future of Media, they're already moving in that direction. So, for example, in the Republic of Ireland, there was always a tax on printed newspapers. So you uh-huh. got your paper for a dollar, and you paid twenty cents to the government. The government has just removed that tax, uh, but the price of the newspapers hasn't gone down. So that has been a a way of government to try and help the newspapers. So say you were selling your paper for a dollar twenty um, and twenty cents went to the government. The government last year in response to the Future of Media Commission said, okay, we're not going to tax you anymore. Uh, but the newspapers didn't reduce their price. It remained at one twenty. So the entire one twenty goes to the newspaper. So that that is one of the measures and there are other measures that the Irish government has has uh, is working on to try and support local journalists. They yeah. they also they also Advertise strongly in the local newspapers across the Republic of Ireland. Okay, uh, especially especially during COVID, lots of the public information, and that's not the case in Northern Ireland. It's not the case where where we receive we receive maybe two percent of our income is is gov- government uh, advertising. Uh huh. So that I mean that's another way that governments can support. Uh, that that's in Northern Ireland, thirty two percent. Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry, Jim. Two. Two percent. Two percent. Yeah. Two percent. One fiftieth. Yeah. In in what? Scotland, go ahead. And so I just say in, 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 in Scotland, in order to support print newspapers at the start of COVID, the Scottish government announced it would spend five million pounds, which is about I don't know, six point five million dollars on yeah. print print advertising. Yeah, that's 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 bigger. So that was a what would two per, a what would two percent in Northern Ireland comparatively? How much would that be in pounds or dollars? Well, well, in, in our in our income, two percent would be twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. So we're probably you know we're we're, we're we are close to a million dollar uh, turnover. I mean that's small. When it, five years ago we were closer to two million. Uh huh. So that's how quick that's how quickly the descent has been. Yeah. Yeah, so do you do you when 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 you had the Daily Ireland, uh, yeah. uh, what I mean, it it seemed to me to be a pretty good uh, check on on the government itself. Is well, that- well, abso- well, absolutely. That, that was a, that was a true, despite the fact that um, there there was and is a very strong pro United Ireland constituency in Ireland. There isn't one newspaper in Ireland which has an editorial position in favour of United Ireland. Uh-huh. Not not one national paper. The Irish Times wouldn't have that position. The papers of the Irish Independent, now owned by a Belgian group, wouldn't have that position. Would be very hostile, in fact, to Sinn Fein. Um and that's that's true of the Sunday newspapers and so on. So so we were we were in a absolutely in a different niche, a different niche as the Americans say. Yeah. Um uh, but so so that was that was that we were trying to fill that niche, but you know it, it wasn't it, it was a good idea, but it wasn't viable because we didn't sell enough newspapers and we didn't have enough advertising. So um, it, it, and also it was a very difficult period with gov- you know go- government ministers um, publicly excoriating and, and and smearing the the newspaper. So difficult atmosphere. Well, I remember your. I still have a framed picture of your. Your headline was bullshit when they <laughs> when they did that. Did that? Yeah. Did, yeah. But but you were calling. Weren't you really just calling it like it is? Well, absolutely. But one government minister said we were like the Nazis newspaper. <laughs> Actually, the, the minister for justice. So if you were an advertiser in Dublin and you're told by the minister of justice 
uh, this is uh, equivalent to the Nazi newspaper. Um, you'd, you'd be a brave person to to advertise in that newspaper. So, so there was I mean, that that was the politics of the past. You know, really, yeah. you have to remember, you have to remember, uh, Jim, until nineteen ninety four, uh, Sinn Fein was banned from TV and radio. Yeah, uh, over the previous twenty plus years, north and south. So we were coming out of a, a period of, of, you know, censorship, uh, political um, marginalization of the voice we represented. But look, I'm not making any excuses as a business that didn't work. But um, it, it played a, I think it played a fight, vital role at that time in encouraging Republicans towards the uh, wholly nonviolent strategy, you know, that the, the armed campaign was over. Uh, and I think we, we played a part in that, showing the, the importance of um, bringing to an end the armed campaign, which was in its last days, decommissioning of weapons, was in, the end of the campaign was announced in 2005. So I think the newspaper played a valuable role in that acceleration of yeah. the United Irish project towards uh, this wholly democratic and peaceful means, and of course, which has been, been stunningly successful over the last 20 years, where, yeah. where you know, they're now on course to be in the, the head of the government, both north and south. Now, in, in recent times, there's been a little more tension, but is things still moving forward, right? Uh, things, are, a- things, things have been transformed. The, the 1998 peace agreement, which was brokered by George Mitchell, Senator yeah. George Mitchell, uh, absolutely transformed things. And yeah, you're right, there are bumps in the road. But what President Biden came to see in uh, last week, the week before, uh, he was last in Belfast in 1992. Yeah. He was sta- standing in a new university and he made the point that no one in 1992 built a building with glass front, uh, with a glass front because of so many bombs. Yeah. So, uh, so it ha- it's make, we're making five, we're making progress. There are political difficulties, but, um, in my view, it's, it's going in the, in the right direction. And, you know, I think it's inevitable now there will be a referendum. On a United Ireland, uh, this decade, I would say. Um, uh-huh. But 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 the question is, will that referendum be successful? That's a that's a wholly different matter, which is going to take a lot of work. But certainly, it's you know, it's really it's, the con- the country has changed, and it's yeah, you know, much much more prosperous place and much more opportunity, and and people are treated equally now, by by and large. Now, what is the difference right now between the local journalism situation in Belfast and then in the Republic? Is it is it well, better the, the Republic or? Well, yes, I think the, the it's better in the Republic. They're under the same pressures, but they do get more government advertising from yeah. their local con- from their local councils and from central government, and and from government agencies, uh, and they now have a you know a commission which investigated the difficulties of of uh, newspapers and came up with a number of solutions and uh, uh, supports. So that's that's wholly different in the in the north Northern Ireland. There is zero zero government. Well, we don't we don't have a government. There is no government at the moment. Yeah. But there is there are zero provisions to help uh, newspapers now. One of the things the, the the government is talking about if it comes back uh, is saying that they want to put into procurement, they want to put advertising to have a to have a social value element of procurement. So if you were a if you were a a government department that wants to have a campaign about domestic abuse, just to give you an actual example, yeah. um, about you know preventing domestic abuse and alerting the authorities. Under the procurement, if you were bidding, an advertising agency bidding to win that contract, say, for half a million dollars, you would have to say how you will um, support social value in that contract. And so part of that would be saying, okay, I'm going to support local journalism. So if you were to put ads on Twitter, well, that obviously doesn't support local journalism. Yeah. If you, put ad, if you put ads on billboards, we like to say, I haven't met a billboard yet which can report on an under-14 basketball game. <laughs> and I haven't, you know, so, uh, so so it will make the agencies think. But that could be two to three years down the road. But that that's a sort of, that's a sort of government intervention which would make a real difference. And yeah. so we, we'd, be, we'd be really in favor of that, you know. Yeah. So how about now? Are you, you, you know, you said in your in your piece about the the Anderson Town papers, you said they're going to be a be a be around as long as you got them out in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's that. 
that's that's very optimistic. I think I think the papers will be there. Uh, it won't be on the same model, and it could be some. It's going to be someone else running it. So you know, I think there will always be a voice. But what will it be? So at the minute, the Irish Echo was really involved five five members of staff. Yeah, yeah. So is that is that is that our destiny? Um, I think we can have more than that in Belfast, but you know, it's it's un- unless we go down the path of the Lanfest Lanfest Institute and the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, I think it's Tampa Bay. It's Tampa Bay Times. Tampa Bay News is also a a not for profit. The only way that that will the only way that it'll be there in in forever, as I was saying, is if uh, we manage to convince some of the many philanthropic funds that are available to um, to 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 support local journalism. And, and this is a new concept in in the north of Ireland because the philanthropic funds. Previously, went into helping feed kindergarten kids, helping adults learn about computer skills, uh, fighting poverty, uh, working to include migrants and in communities. When we go to the philanthropic funds and say a strong newspaper provides the foundation for healthy, strong, resilient, cohesive communities, they really don't know what we're talking about. So we uh-huh. have to start a process of education. We have to explain to them that, look, you know, a a community which is holding government to account, which has a voice, is a stronger community than one that doesn't. And, you know, as you know, all the statistics from America say places, places which are new is deserts, uh, yeah. the engagement, the engagement and, and, uh, in, in elections is lower. Um, I don't know, that's a chicken or egg. So, so, so we're starting the discussion and we're, we're, we're Dealing with a range, you know, of funds. This this will have to be a cocktail of funders, um, and some get it easier than others. But we are pointing to report for America, um, which which we I find very inspiring, and we have we have helped set up a social enterprise called Report for Belfast. Uh-huh. Um, Is that modeled on the Report for America? To to a degree, in that it's about supporting local journalism. But it's doing a lot. It wants to do a lot more than than. Sorry, but it, it's it's focuses on Belfast media. It's focuses on ensuring that Belfast media survive, um, rather than trying to help every local newspaper. Yeah. So we have we have appropriated the name, if you wish, but our but our mission is much more focused than that general approach of you know nationwide approach of report for America. Are, yeah. are you familiar with the Landfest Landfest Institute? Yeah, the Landfest Institute. Yeah, I know I know them well. <laughs> Maybe you put me on to that, and and obviously they don't fund outside America. You, you maybe put me on to another group in Chicago who also don't fund outside America. But we have, we've approached them. Um, Who'd you, know, you approach I, in Chicago? You you actually get you 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 give me a you give me a name. I'll find it, but you you give me the name. McCormick As, uh, Foundation. The McCormick Sorry. Foundation. Yeah, yeah, and, and they come back. Excuse me, Jim. They come back with a nice note saying, "Look." Um, you know, we we admire what you're doing, but it's not for us. Um, yeah. But we're, we're continuing. Local. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. But they're, they're also the, I can't help you there because they're all Tribune guys and they're pissed off at me about my book. <laughs> but I know well, that. How are you doing with the Lundfest guys? Well, I'm not. I'm not. We, 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 they, again, they don't fund outside. But I am keeping in touch with their developments and what they're doing, and that—that's an interesting model where they don't, they don't. The Landfest Institute doesn't run the Philadelphia Inquirer. The Philadelphia Inquirer is an independent, not-for-profit. But the Landfest Institute does support special um, initiatives uh-huh. by the Philadelphia Inquirer, and that is the model which I think is the most interesting. So, if Report for Belfast could find a way to. Be allowed to take government funding and then say we want the Belfast media to report on the influx of migrants in the West Belfast. We have a strong Syrian community now, which fled the war in Syria, who are who are refugees, uh, which means they have permission to work. Um, yeah. Many of them are now have, have permission to vote, um, and yet they remain isolated from the broader community in many ways. So. Uh, what why we like is a report for Belfast to be able to say to a government body, which is dealing with issues of inclusion and integration, to say, look, we like to have a column, a columnist writing in Arabic, 
we would like to cover the Eid celebration, which is just finished at the end of Ramadan. We would like to cover that community the way we do, the way we used to cover you know, our general community, births, deaths, anniversaries, celebrations. Um, so the idea is the government would say to report for Belfast, okay, here's $20,000, do this project for six months. Um, that That's that's what we're trying to do at the minute. And we're, we made that approach to the Arts Council in relation to better coverage of the arts, which is which is very important to the community. We've made that approach to another body about covering Irish language activity, which you know is very strong yeah. in, in, in West Belfast. Um, so, so we're on that journey, but as anyone who, who's in that world knows, making your application, making the contact, doing the interviews, making the application, providing additional evidence, uh, waiting for the, the board to meet and make decisions, do you think? Do you, do you think the uh, first of all, inevitably you have to go online? Right? Well, we are on, we are online, and the only question is online. So we are, we're BelfastMedia dot com and IrishEcho dot com. The, yeah. the problem, the, the issue with so we're so we and we have a strong. When I say strong, we have about two hundred thousand unique visitors every month, which we think is mm-hmm. good, and it's a, it's a very it's a very strong website. It's well presented. We have a, you know, we have a good designer in Paris, um, so it looks well. We're able to embed social media posts and YouTube and Twitter and do links. So, so I think it's a strong website, but it doesn't make any money. Um, uh-huh. And if we go down a pay for view model, well, okay. So then, then we get three percent of our readers. We we pay for it, five percent. So how yeah. do we contact? How do we contact the other ninety five percent? If your mission is public service journalism, it's it's just it's just not 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 in my view. I could be wrong. In my view, it's not realistic that the people you're trying to reach in what they, what they sometimes call hard to reach communities, the people who were the bread and butter of Anderson Town News in the seventies and eighties, I don't think they're going to go online and pay for it. So you're losing ninety five percent of your public. Well, how can you be involved in public service journalism and only serve the five percent who are internet yeah. savvy enough and and wealthy enough to pay for it? So we are actually introducing programmatic Google ads as we speak. Uh-huh. Uh, but but I think I think I'm going to be really surprised if they make a, a significant impact on the on the bottom line. You know, relying on Google to 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 fund your journalism. Yeah. I think I, I think I think it's a I think it's it's a little bit of a uh, uh, a holy grail that I don't think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna achieve it on the way we're trying that as well. So it, and and um, the problem is you're not getting any advertising on it, right? Is that the problem? No, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we have you know, you know our, our advertising is so has, has, has fallen. I think it looks well, but you know people aren't terribly interested in, in banner ads. Um, you know, so we 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 if you go on it today, like you can see some ads there, but it, yeah. it's very it's very it's very hard. It's very hard to. Um, Make us appealing you're on, and I sit in the office. I sit every day beside the ad team, and I hear them ringing up the people who sell carpet, the people who sell furniture, the people who sell TVs, the people who are per um, per aerials on your roof, uh, and I hear that those people saying, "I'm on Google, I'm getting results from Google. I'm on Facebook, I'm getting results from Facebook." So you know, we we uh, you know we're we're swimming against the tide. So so. I mean, I, I would have liked to talk to you and say we have found a, a miracle money tree, which is keeping public service journey, but, but we haven't. We haven't. Yeah. The reality is, the reality is, the reality is it's very tough. Uh, um, I, I, I am, I can say without fear of contradiction, our model in America is working. Um, and, and I'm very, mm-hmm. I'm very pleased with the Irish Echo.com if you go on it because it's a, it's a small, profitable newspaper, probably with a $1 million turnover as well or close to that. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, you know it's a this this week it's a fifty six page newspaper, um, and we send that out by post to every every state in the union. Yeah. There are there are our subscribers, um, and it's online and it's on sale in some stores in New York. However, the secret of its success is maybe six major events a year, including Buffalo, New York, where we are today. Yeah. Where tomorrow, where tonight we'll do the Irish Arts Awards with. The, uh, Strong local sponsorship, 200, 230 people in the room who paid two hundred fifty dollars each to be there. So it's not a not a cheap affair. Um, 
And and you know, we then we have some bigger events. We do the Irish Labour Awards, which the Irish Labour Awards are probably the biggest event of of the year for us. Um, and the Irish Campfire and other events. So, and, the, and the Echo is online, right? Absolutely, IrishEcho.com. But it, you don't have a print edition. Oh yes, we do, and we have you subscribers do. in every we have subscribers in every state in the union. Okay, so we, we will po- we post out to every state in the union uh, subscriptions. Yeah. And you do that through the mail? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay. And we sell in some stores. So we're doing both. But, you know, as I said, or that's a small, <laughs> there's there's five wages against that, you know. Yeah. And, and, we're, and we're running events. Uh, we've, we've found a way, and I, I'm, I'm content with it. Uh, okay. We'd like, we'd like to do more. Yes, we have a stringer in Chicago, as you know. We have a stringer in, in Brooklyn, New York. We have, we have our, our entire sport coverage, including Irish-American athletes, some of them from Ireland, Irish American boxers, some of them from Ireland. You know, we cover everything in the sport, but everybody's a stringer. But we, yeah. we still put seven, eight, nine pages of sport together. Um but it's it's uh, it's 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 tough. But it, in America we have found the model um okay. more successfully than we've done in Belfast. But Jim, that, that's a that's a small <laughs> that's a small that's a small newspaper, you know. So it's it's good to be able to you know, we have a great editor, Ray O'Hanlon. Is yeah. the preeminent Irish American journalist. He is the authority on Irish immigration. He wrote a, he wrote a book called Unintended Consequences about the the uh, the Irish immigration battle uh, and immigra- immigration itself. Of course, is a huge controversy and crisis in, in America or issue in America. But he's he, he's the he's the authority on that issue. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty lucky to have him as editor. And Peter McDermott is the in charge of arts and in charge of general news. And then we have a reporter in Belfast and um, a graphic art guy, and then the rest is is uh, stringers. But it's you know it's a it's a it's a good it's a, maybe it's still a good package, but it's it's um, it's 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 we we've cut our cut our cloth to suit the times we're in. So I'm going to probably my my session is going to run out in a couple of minutes. Okay, all right, okay, but um, well, we've done well. We've done well, yeah. And, and let's, let, let me add something. If there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Yeah, so. and you're more than kind. And I mean, I spoke to you some years back. We were doing the social enterprise. I said it might be useful to have your name as a as an advisory group. We yeah. we've, we've 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 switched and 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 uh, uh, you know we we we've, we've changed directions in some way. I mean, my thought with the social enterprise was that it would would take over all the staff, but yeah. the the social enterprise board. We have a board together now. Uh, they don't want to take on an enterprise which is loss making, and you can understand that they're yeah, saying, sure. "Give us something which is viable, and we'll get extra grant, and we we'll start building again." So at the minute, um, the, the paper isn't viable in Belfast. So they're saying, "Guys, you need to get smaller, and then yeah. give it to us." And and so they have some applications, and or else they will do the land fest model, which is they say, "We don't own the business, we yeah. don't own the business, but we will, we will, we will." draw down grants grant support and we will funnel that to you to report on migrants to report on inclusion to report on education to report on health to report on Irish language the challenge is then will the funders permit that will the funders say okay we're happy to give money to a social enterprise to give to a, a, an ordinary company um, so those are those are some of the we're testing this we, we are the first we're the first local newspaper in Ireland to test this concept, north or south, um, and to you test, know to test the concept of what I'm sorry, so, social enterprise. Oh, funding. social enterprise. Okay. To move to move to that model, whether we move wholly or we move partly, we're the first. But you know, just just uh, earlier this year, one of the you know a paper which had been published in uh, Ireland for a hundred hundred and seventy years, perhaps, closed was to close down. Now it's been bought up by a British enterprise, but it will reduce it to a you know, just a a, a solely internet play. What paper was that? It's called it's called the Nuri Reporter. The Nuri so, Reporter. You, okay. you, you remember coming through Nuri N E W R Y, yeah. and it's worth googling that because you know the family that it had been run by a family for 150 years and not run by another family the last 30, and they said, look, it just 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 we have to we, we can't go on, and uh, they they give a date for final publication, and then uh, a British company came in and said, okay, we'll take it over. But it's yeah. it's uh, it's uh, it's 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 going to be completely different going forward. It's not going to be what it was. So I think you're going to see more of that um, because it's it's just it's just not. I don't think it's viable. 
I don't think it's fast. You know, we're always a little bit behind America <laughs> in newspapers, and um, I think there, there's a there's a storm there's, there's a storm already arrived, but I think it's going to get worse over coming over coming years. And that so it doesn't sound like it's really too different than America, where we're having a lot of trouble. Uh, I think it's in, in Northern Ireland, it's exactly the same because there's no government support. In the Republic yeah. of Ireland, at least the government has said we want to. The, the commission looked at more than just print media, but at least the government said, okay, there's a crisis, there's a problem, yeah. uh, and you know local politicians are very strong. So that's been recognised, and other European countries have recognised this. So uh, you know, I, I know that President Biden, as part of the one of his recent acts, was trying to get some tax relief for companies that employ journalists and so on. So you know, and I know it's a I know it's a hot button issue in America with some people saying that. We're not, we don't want to fund newspapers, uh, yeah. but at, at least at least you're thinking about it. Where, where I'm from, it's Belfast has not really been thought about at government level at all, sadly. So, when you say newspaper, you're not talking about the print version. You're talking about what a newspaper does, right? Well, yes, I'm talking. Yes, I'm news service. News service would be a proper word. Our news yeah, platform. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, like when I talk about a newspaper, I don't talk about the print product. No, no, thing. absolutely. No, I'm we're, talking we're the, about yeah, what yeah. the newspaper yeah. did. No, we're yeah. we're on the same page. We're on the same page exactly. The, the okay. use of the use of newspaper word newspaper is a misnomer. So we're yeah. trying to remain a twenty first century news service. Podcasts, blogging, blogging, using social media, um, uh, live streaming, uh, okay. podcasts, every, everything plus the plus the web. You know, plus plus print. Yeah, it's everything. Uh, and do, doing the job with local newspapers where we're supposed to do or are supposed to do. That's what I, that's why I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right, Martin, it was great to talk to you again. Good luck. You know, You're having a good event? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I'm really pleased. Yeah. Buffalo is such an interesting spot as well. I was out early this morning looking out at the lake. I don't know which lake it was, but I was down at the that's lake where, side. That's where the yeah. Irish uh, uh, attacked Canada once, invaded Canada. Right? They, they, <laughs> they certainly did, the Fenian invasion. And they have a, so, so they, have a, they have a monument here to that, looking across at Canada. And... Uh, <laughs> No, they have, they have actually in the in the in the Irish ward here, the Irish quarter here. They have bilingual street names in Irish and English. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that that that's interesting to me. Unless you look you look after yourself. Thank you for including me. Let's okay. stay in touch. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Look, love to everyone.